Again, good afternoon, morning or evening, everybody. Thanks for joining our Open Office Hour series. It's been a while since we've uh, talked in this forum. I'm glad you guys are back and we're back. Happy New Year to everybody. Today's topic is going to be in advanced state searches. Uh, a few months ago in May, we did a webinar on safe searches. It was more of a basic webinar. We did cover some advanced topics, but uh, on a personal note, recently I went through the advanced safe search training with NetSuite and you know, learned a lot uh, and thought it would be a good uh, idea to share some of that knowledge with you. That that course that I took is, is in the learning cloud pass that um, uh, most accounts have already, uh, as you've uh, renewed with NetSuite since last July, that has come included in the subscription. So make sure to take advantage of that. If you have any questions, let us know. We'll help you with that. Uh, it's about a four or five hour course. So I'm trying to we'll try to compress it in about an hour. Uh, and please feel free to ask any questions uh, as as you feel uh, you have them along the way using the Q and A window that I'll make sure that I have open here so I can see them. Um, just to cover, um, just to talk about what we're going to cover today. So uh, try to you know see if time permits, but we'll I'll try to cover about 13 different topics um, uh, with searches that are already been created. So I'll make it a little bit easier, but we'll walk through them and explain the different options. And, and the, the main purpose of today is for you to see the breadth uh, of functionality that exists in Nets when it comes to safe searches. Uh, a lot of things that, that can be done that you may or may not know can be done. And uh, you know, then uh, spark your curiosity to continue learning uh, using Sweet Answers, using that learning cloud pass, or using our support services so that we can help you, you know, expand your use of NetSuite. So here's a list, you know, we'll go from basic formulas to just, you know, standard text formulas, conversion formulas, uh, using ranking, using grouping, using highlights and formulas in the actual criteria, and uh, use, how do you use safe searches to create your own KPIs? Um, and, you know, we'll go through this. And again, if you have any questions along the way, please note them in the Q&A window. Um, and um, if we can't answer them today, we'll, we'll personally follow up with you to, to answer them offline. So with that said, I'm going to um, log into NetSuite. Like I said, I, I did an advanced uh, class recently, so uh, it, it can't take credit for the creation of the safe searches, but can take credit for showing you how to use them. So win-win. Um, and let me log into the account. Uh, hopefully everybody can see my, my NetSuite. We're good. And everybody can hear me. If you can't hear me, then please uh, use the, the Q&A. Uh, I guess somebody will shoot up already. But all right, so we'll go through this. Um, and, and like I said, I have all the safe searches already in the account. There's a lot of safe searches here that were created as part of this training account. And we're just going to go through some of them and, you know, start simple. Um, first one is, you know, a, a, a standard basic customer search. Um, like, you know, you know, you can create searches from, uh, for any record, whether standard or custom records. And you can, and, you know, we covered that in our previous webinar, feel free to look at it in, in our YouTube page. Uh, so I'm going to, in all this exercise, I'm going to start from an advanced, from a safe search that's already being created. So from a simplest point of view, obviously, you know that you can create a safe search and you can you know, you can select filters by looking at any information that's included in that record or any related records using this dot, dot, dot records. Um, and once you have, you know, that, that, that um, criteria created, then you can just, you know, create your, your, um, your results. And this is very simple. Again, you can choose fields from the, from the list of, of fields, or you can choose fields from the, um, from the dot 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 or related record. So that, that is very simple. A couple of additional things that we covered last time, and this is just like a primer for the next, is that you can use, you can control security of the safe search by making it public or sharing it with specific um, audience here. Um, you can also create uh, safe searches to run as lists. So when you go to your list of customers, then you can have that that um, hide this. 
you can have that list here. That's what the list view uh, or checkbox means. And you can also have it as a dashboard view. You want to add it as a, in a dashboard using a portlet. You can add it as a sub list, which will allow you to use it in the customization forms sub list functionality. So you can use it as a sub tab within a record. And, and you can do that by relating those records to each other. Um, we're not going to cover that today. You can use it for reminders and, and then you can define to show it on the menu, which would show it on this safe search, search menu here. So those are the basic things. We'll cover some of the other things um, as we get into more advanced searches. So that was sort of a little bit of a primer, nothing new to learn there. Um, we're going to go now is going to go to setting, you know, um, additional criteria in the, in the on a very similar search and being able to use um, uh, criteria in the in the or formulas and expressions in the criteria as well as adding um, some formulas in the in the results. So in this case, you see that this is a, a different search. I have it public. I also have it available as a list view. So it's a customer, it's still a customer search and I have it available as a dashboard view. Um, here, instead of just having the industry, I have an expression. And in, in, in order to use expressions, which are going to be the and or expressions, you need to click on this box here, to use expressions and then additional columns will show and you'll be able to use parentheses, either single or double or now triple parentheses. Uh, I think that's a newer feature um, to be able to create those and or um, criteria, which allow you to exclude records and or include records uh, based on your on that criteria. Very important to use the the uh, the parentheses very clearly. You, you usually recommend writing writing down that safe search in a piece of paper if you're if you're trying to figure out how to use the parentheses and all that. Uh, but in this case, we have safe search as looking at a specific industry, two industries, where the last order was last year, and then whether the email or the phone are not empty. So in this case, it's going to bring, uh, it's going to bring uh, results where either the email is empty for the customer or the phone is empty, um, or both, right? Um, not when both are empty, but that would include because one of them would be empty. And then when we look at the results, we can see very simple results. The only thing here, again, to get started with, with formulas is that you have the fields of the results, and then you have this formula fields. And if I type here, there's there's several types of formula fields that we'll cover today. You know, currency, date, date and time, numeric, percent text. And depending on how you want your, to display your results, you want to choose the right field. In this case, I'm just choosing a, a date field when I'm taking the last order date and I'm, I'm adding 90 days to it, as an example. Maybe I want to see, you know, you know if I want to, I want to have some, some um, you know, when I have, a search where I can look at when 90 days after the last order and, and, and act to that because I want to at least touch my customers every 90 days with an order. So this is an example that that you may want to do with other fields where you can subtract or or add days. And you can see here uh, if I do if I add a, a, lot, a row here, I have the date of last order. So I'm going to move it down. I'm going to drag it and move it right above that. I'm going to remove this formula, and you can see that you can. Add your, you know, your own labels to the uh, to the results, so you can change the native labels of, of NetSuite. Um, it's about it in this specific uh, uh, search. I'm going to run it, and you'll see the results. The results are going to be what we expected. You know, we have the last order on 11 uh, uh, November 7th, and it says that the next 90 days after that will be, you know, February 5th. Right. So very simple order. A very simple safe search. Just, we just have some criteria. We have no filters here. We could add filters if we wanted to filter something. You can see still the pencils, which is the inline editing fun functionality of safe searches, where I can come here and I can change something on the fly so you don't have to go record by record to be able to update in mass if you know what you're doing. And there's other functionality you can do as far as copy paste and stuff that you can do here that uh, we covered in the last in our last session. So that's the next set of moving from more simple to, to more complex searches. 
The next one, um, you know, we're going to talk about um, formulas and functions and get a little bit more, more complex there. Um, one more thing that I want to show, sorry, about the last one is if I go to my list of customers, we saw that we saw that that, that was uh, that view was was created as a as a um, as a v, as a list view. So we have it here. So it's something that then we can select as we're going and analyzing our customers. We don't always have to run the same search. We can go to this list view and, and choose it here. And it's the same thing. You can still edit it because it's in my editing. Uh, in, in this case, I have show inactives turned on, uh, showed. I can uncheck that and it will refresh and remove that column. And because I have the preference of having the internal IDs show, then it's going to show the internal IDs going to show in every safe search, uh, whether you select it as a result or not, because I, that's a preference that you can select on your own, um, in your own preferences for that specific role. <coughs> so moving back to, to this one, in this one, Again, we're going to uh, look at, at formulas and functions within the results area. Very simple criteria, no expressions. Um, I have one additional industry and I have one additional criteria when I want to see customers where the balance today is greater than, I, than, than zero dollars, where they actually have a balance. If I look at the results, then you can see here a lot more, um, a lot more formulas that, that we can use in the um in the results and we'll go through all of them uh, fairly quickly and then we'll see the results of what those formulas are you can see here that instead of having the labels of the fields or the fields from netsuite in all cases except one i have formulas and and the idea is here to show you different examples of what you can do right the first one is you know just you can have a text where all you're doing is you know putting text specific text that you want to show in every line, right? In this case, the text is gonna be text formulas and functions. And, you know, I added a custom label to, to each of these labels here. The second one is where I have, and I wanna show, maybe I wanna show my entity ID, which in this case, you know, this is a customer search. So the ID of that customer, I wanna show it in, in uppercase, everything in uppercase. So that's what using this formula upper will, you know, make, their entire result in uppercase. You can do the same thing with lower and it will show everything in lowercase. Uh, you can change it where you have this formula called init cap, uh, where you know it's gonna take the, the, everything and put the first letter in, um, in first the email initial in caps, but then everything else in lowercase or as, as it is written in the email. And sorry, I skipped this, but the way you add formulas is basically you come to this formula uh, field and then you select the formula here. And I'm gonna, you know, it will always add it at the end. And you just select out of the standard formulas that are here. And in this case, you'll see that it tells you, you know, what you want to, it shows you the parameters when you do a formula of what you need inside that parameter. You'll always see at least one parameter. And, and this character can be either, um, you know, something in text or it could be, you know, a field that exists in, in, uh, in the account already, right? So you, you have flexibility there. There are other, there are other formulas um, that, you know, are going to show you additional parameters. Um, for example, uh, here you see add months where you have, you know, the date and how many, you know, what you want to add to it. And there's others that um, will, um, for example, if you do case, that will show a lot more optional and required parameters. When you, whenever you see this square parenthesis here, this bracket, it means it, it's a conditional, it, it's, a, it's an optional parameter that you can add. So there's a lot of help in, in, in Sweet Answers for that. We'll see a lot more examples here that where we have multiple parameters, but that's where you would find the formulas. And this is where you find the fields that you can use within that specific formula. So in this case, we have initial initial uh, capitalization. We have other things like, for example, you know, concatenation, where we have a formula field and we're concatenating the sales rep all in upper cases. The the pipe, see the double pipe, uh, is going to uh, is the the, the SQL uh, formula for for concatenation. Then you have text field in single quotes, 
and then you'll have, you know, we are concatenating with lower entity ID and again with the dot. So if you want to concatenate multiple fields or multiple texts, you can do it, you know, by using those pipes. Um, and other things that, for example, sales rep is, and then you have text concatenated with the email address. Um, you can, you can, you know, you can take the phone number and you're taking the first three characters of the phone number by doing the subtract, uh, you know, the starting from one to three to, to, to get the area code and a lot of other formulas that you can see here that, you know, that are all text formulas. And the result of that, you know, when we run it, it's going to be what we expect we'll have, you know, and here we have the, 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 the name, you know, what we did so we can validate it. One of the things is that I, apparently NetSuite did it in the last release and, and um, it's not, it is, and we'll get into HTML where you, you used to be able to add HTML to the labels. That's why we have this break here. The idea was that it would say number customer name, number two customer name, and in another row uppercase, in uppercase, that apparently has been deprecated and we're trying to figure out with support if that was an, a bug or on purpose, um, but we'll see HTML in a little bit. But you can see here the results in, you know, the text in, in the upper cases, uh, you know, uh, the, the, different, the different formulas and the results that, that they have when, when, there is, when there are results, right? Area code, for example, um, you know, it's, um, so it's here. So this is an example of text formulas. Um, we move on. Um, again, please feel free to ask any questions if you see anything that, that you're interested in along the way. Uh, we're gonna now cover converting date to text. And so in this, in this one, what we're doing is converting date formulas to text. And here is where you can get very creative with NetSuite. Uh, and you'll see here that because we're converting to text, the formula type that we want to use is formula text, not from the date. Uh, and you will, and typically, you know, the, 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 the formula that you'll use is this two car formula, which basically is going to convert that date to character. And, and in the parameter, if I, if I start the formula from scratch, you'll see here, um, the parameters, it's going to be the date time field. And then you have different optional parameters that, that you want to, that you can use. Um, and these are, this is uh, a little bit confusing. I basically recommend that we, you, you remove this and then you do your own parameters as you add them. But here you'll, you'll see several, you know, options. Um, for example, we're, we're taking the first day, the first order day, which is a field in NetSuite that captures that first order for that customer, and is going to convert it into, um, you know, into, into the day of the week, the month, and then the year in this formula. So it's gonna say, you'll, we'll see here, it'll say Monday, uh, May 17th, and, and, and this, this formula here is what does that. The, 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 the day with the Y at the end, month is, the NetSuite knows from SQL that that is the month, the, the date, is going to be this two two character uh, date code plus a th, um, and then you know the four uh, years, right? Um, we have another example here where it's going to take that date created of that customer and convert it to a date in this form in this in this format. It's going to convert your standard month date year and convert it to date month year, and this our formula because it's a daytime field. Another example is where you you want to um, convert that into you know to text and 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 in the text mean the tenth of May two thousand nineteen for example. Um, and you can see other examples here that you know that uh, I'll be glad to send you if you want. Um, in this specific example at the end we'll see the result, but they're all taking one specific date field, in this case, either date, date created um, or entity ID, and, you know, or a date, and it's converting it to a, a text because you may want to display it in that way. So you see here, for example, it converted this um, in, the, in this more complex where it took multiple fields, uh, text and multiple fields, right? 
the customer record is text one Renault is a field was created on and then December 24th is from a date field in next week and the first order was placed on this is from a date field so it's concatenating multiple fields and converting them to take date fields into this text so um, you know as I was seeing this a couple of weeks ago I thought it was very cool I'd never been asked to do this by a customer but you know um, but now we know we can do it right so we can start getting creative on things we could do to display results in different in different ways moving on um, the second time we're about halfway through and we have about half of the four minutes to go so I think we're good on time um, the next one is we're going to convert numbers to text um, and similar concept, you know, we'll have your expressions and, you know, here's where you may want to convert, as you know, when you are doing um, um, currencies in NetSuite, there's a little bit of natively limitations on how you display it. If you put a field with currency, the result is just going to be the number, the dollar value without any symbols. And what this allows you to do is to take that and convert it to text to show additional uh, characters. So in this case, for example, I'm taking the balance um, and I'm converting it to, to a format where I have the dollar value, the dollar symbol in, uh, in front, the, the standard dollar symbol in front. And this is important that, you know, as the long, the bigger your numbers are, the more you, you'll want to prescribe this formula here where you have the millions, right? So if you have clients that owe you I don't know, over $999 million, which hopefully you don't, but if they do, then you would have to have an extra, you know, nine comma for the billion, for the 10th billion. So, so this is something to, if not, it's gonna give you an error. So in this case, it's gonna convert that balance to this formula. Uh, in this case, it's going to convert it to a generic currency uh, formula or symbol. So it doesn't use it the dollar value, but it will be generic. So if you're using multiple currencies, It'll, it'll, it'll display the, the right currency uh, of that specific balance. Um, here it's going to convert it into, it's gonna use the, the ISO, uh, the International Standard Organization Currency Code uh, here, and it's gonna add a, a sign at the beginning. So this S here is for the sign, a plus or minus sign, and then it will convert that into, into the number here. Um, and you'll see that in the results. Um, if you want to add leading zeros because you want all your numbers to have the same number of characters, then this is where you would say how many leading zeros you want. And then the, then you have the currency here and sorry, and a symbol at the end. So let me do that. Um, so again, a lot, a lot of options here. So um, hopefully some of this makes sense. And this is being recorded as always, so you can refresh it later. Um, here, you know, we're doing... Um, the same converting the same number but we're adding brackets um if it's negative by adding the pr at the end it's going to do the symbol but brackets if it's negative if you want to display a number for whatever reason in roman numerals basically you want to take that id and convert it to roman numerals but just by adding rn in in, in in single quotes it will convert that number in this case it's the internal id into roman numerals um, if you want to use scientific notation and then, you know, here again, we're, we're concatenating where we're saying as of uh, today in this format, the balance for this company is and is converting, right? So it's taking multiple texts and using it in multiple values and, and concatenating in multiple formulas into one field. And the result of that is going to be, you know, you have the different uh, formats. Here we have it with a plus sign. And the, and the international uh, currency sign uh, or, or ISO, these are all US dollars anyway, but you would see Euro if it was Euro in the balance, um, you know, with the leading zero. So they're all in leading zeros with the sign at the, at the, at the end. Um, then you have, you know, with brackets if it's negative. So if I were to sort this, nobody has a negative balance here. So there's no results in number, Roman numerals and then the scientific notation. So just a lot of different ways that you can display numbers to make your reports a little bit more um, useful and when you're exporting this to excel 
now it has the formulas you don't have to worry about or, or the symbols you don't have to worry about you know adding that in in and manipulating it outside of the tree um again i already mentioned the labels uh and the, and the, and, the, and the html uh but we'll 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 see an example of that uh with an actual results html results in the formula in the results in a, in, a, in a few minutes next we're going to move to numeric formulas uh, and these are going to be very simple numeric formulas but you know we, we've seen date formulas we've seen text formulas uh now we want to cover numeric formulas here and basically you know we have three types of numeric formulas um we have you know just standard numeric formulas to, to do any number uh percent formulas if you want to show it in percents and in you know and then currency formulas if you're manipulating fields that out of type currency and the difference is the formula currency you know will use fields that are out of, of, of type currency and and so very simple uh formula using the same formula here but it's going to be displayed in different um in different ways we will you have the same number displayed as a number same number displayed as a percent same number displayed as a currency so you see the difference is currency will have cents you know the cents field the two two decimal cents field and the number will not and then if you want to do calculations uh for balances you can just take two numbers and add them subtract them multiply them using you know standard kind of math formulas um and it will display that display that here as always and i, I haven't talked about this in uh, you know, we've talked about this before but not today is that you can take when you're creating your your safe search in your results, you can always define how you sort them, um, whether in ascending or descending order. And you have, you know, three three fields to sort. But you can always, as always, uh, you can always, you know, change the sorting by clicking on the formula, on the on the label, sorry, uh, field, and it'll sort them up or down based on that preference. So that that's just standard and uh, NetSuite uh, functionality there. Moving on, um, we're going to talk about, again, talk about date formulas and functions. Give you a taste for that. Um, see what we have here. Oh, I'm going to do it in a new, I'm going to do it, sorry, in a new tab. So here we have a, a, a formula where we're the criteria, or the safe search with the criteria is that we want you know a customer that we've sold to right the last sale is not empty which means that you know we've had at least one sale um uh in here and then we have you know all these formula fields and these are not all that exist but a, a good set of formula fields that we, that, that you can that we can use right and here you see that these are all most of them are going to be formula date fields it's going to be a couple of other fields here but but the, the formulas that we have are we're not, in this case, we're not using actual formulas um, with it like before, where we're, we're not always using um, formulas from here, but we're using, we're using fields or standard formulas that are, are not necessarily fields here, but look like fields. In this case, the first formula is you know, if you want to put today's date, because maybe you want to have a column that says report ran on, you want to, you know, and you can say today is going to show. You know that today is, is is an SQL statement here. Um, you want to do you know 90 days from today, same thing. You just take the date and add it. Um, if you want to see the, the the number of days since that first last sales date from today, you can say well today minus the last sale date is going to calculate how many days since that last sale. Um, if you want to see if you wanted to kind of round up but not using the round functionality um uh, there's a ceiling formula where basically you will take the, the upper end of the of the um of the rounding and it will round it up and you can use floor and it will round it down and it's not we'll see rounding later but this is another way of not having to put all the parameters that you have to put in round you have to put it in round you have to put how many decimal places and all that you want to round up to it but we don't we're not doing that here by adding ceiling and floor um, if you want to add months, um, if you want to add months to the date, 
then you can add, you just have a formula add months. And instead, of, it's not going to add 90 days, it's going to add three real months. So depending on the date of today, it's gonna, it might be 28 days for February, plus the 31 days in March, plus the two days left in January. So it knows in the context of the date, and it'll add the three months, the real months, right, uh, to your formula. Um, if you want to see, you know, what was the last date of the period for, from the last sale date, uh, you can use the last date formula, and it will tell you what the, you know, the, the day of the week of that, of that last sale date. If you want to look at, you know, uh, what is the date of the next Saturday after today, um, you will see that date, for example. So you can put any day of the week, you know, you maybe you want to see with last sale, what was the date of the, of the Friday after the last sale? You could put ne next day, last sale date, Friday. And it's going to give you the date of that specific Friday. Um, if you want to calculate months, not days, you can also do it with days, but months between two dates. You have months and then the two dates in the, in the parameters. Um, and here's a little bit more complex where it's going to be uh, what's the next day of the week after, or the next day, sorry, yeah, after um, after the last sale date plus, uh, you know, or the, the Monday after the last sale date, right? Um, so basically it's taking three months after the last, the, the, the first Monday after the end, the last sale date. Um, here we're converting a, a manual date into an actual date field. Um, if you want to convert that in, instead of typing a date manually, convert it into, into date format. So when you export it, you know, it's a date format and not just text. And here, um, here's calculating the, the, the first Friday after the 25th of December, 2019 and, and show it in this, in this formula, right? So in, in this format. So this is multiple multiple formula that you see. There's a lot that you can do, and if we, you know, click save and run here, um, you'll see here. You know, the 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 um, um, here I'm not rounding, but here I have the the the, the days since the last sale, uh, rounding it, the ceiling, the floor. So it's rounding it. Um, here is taking the months between. Again, you can use rounding formulas, so then round it down to less decimal places. They, the first day, so you see the first day of the of the month, you know, after the last sale, what day it was. Uh, it converts converting that data. So it's taking the, the, this is the next Friday, the first Friday after Christmas. What day it was it? So you don't have to know that. All this is you know using formulas. You can you can do a lot of calculations there uh, as you use. As you think of your use cases, all those formulas can be can be very uh, useful to manipulate dates in, this, in, in reports and be able to to create even alerts. Um, maybe you have an alert of you know show me how many dates that fall 30, ninety days after the last sale. That like we did at the beginning, it could be a reminder, it could be an alert, it could create emails, etc. Uh, as they fall into that into that uh, criteria. Uh, and speaking of, of conditional logic, that's the next uh, example that we'll have. And, and most of you may have used this, but you, know, you can use conditional logic in your results. So again, I'm not using conditional logic in my, in my criteria, but I'm using it in the results. And we have multiple values here. And I'll, I'll, for the sake of time, I'll skip through a couple. But um, so here we have one conditional value is, you know, if the email is empty, NDL means no value. If the email is empty, print this in the in the um, in the results. Please provide email, for example. If the in this case, this is a simple no value. In this case, it's two values. If 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 um, if there is a phone, put yes. If there is no phone, put no. It's, I'm, not, I'm not showing to display the phone just no right in this case if there's no sales rep print unassigned in the in the results um again there's other a couple others and then we get into case case formulas right it's like the equivalent of the if then else formula in this case is you know when the balance is less than zero then um 
print customer credit when but you know when it when the balance is equal to zero then uh print or display no action required and when the balance is between one and twenty five thousand then display monitor else if none of these conditions are met then click seek payment so basically if the if the balance is more than twenty five thousand dollars which is the the resulting condition then it click seek payment right and end and the key here is that you can have one case multiple wins and then you want to have you can you can you can not have the else but and you want but usually want to at least and then you want to have the end uh to signify that the that the condition has end right so in this case this is a a, form, a balance evaluation formula and these are all the results it's not going to be a dollar value it's going to be you know what to do right same thing here there's a, a lot of other uh in this uh, you know other other uh formulas that you can use um when you're using when you're using case when um you know, for example in this case is if you want to look at a customer and you want to see you know the the, the um the cost entity is, is an industry in this case if I want to see if it's in any of these industries, then you know, say category A, and if it's in in any in a in a um, industry that starts with C, then category B, else category C, right? So basically, you're classifying your customers, um, and you can use these formulas in workflows as well. Uh, when you're creating a workflow, you want to have a field that stores this information. But if you don't want to store that information, because why do you need to store it? You just want to be able to display it dynamically in your results, then you can create these dynamic formulas so you don't have to worry about creating additional fields to store data that you, that you really only see in results, in, in, in safe searches and reports. Um, you know, here you can see, for example, then another one where we're combining the no value with, um, with a two car, right? We, we're taking, we're saying if there's no sale date with, you know, then if there is a sale date, do this. If no, put no sales made in the results. So again, um, you know, if I run, if I run this, then you have, you know, you have an example here where there is an email. So it displays the email. If not, it puts provide email. In this case, there is no phone. Um, there's no sales rep. So it's unassigned. If, it, if, it, if there's a sales rep, it puts the sales rep. So instead of showing a blank field, it just says on a sign and kind of shines and, and, and shows you that, right? The different classifications of credit, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see, you know, all those formulas in action and how they just create results without having to create all these extra fields. Sometimes we just create too many fields for the sake of creating fields and creating workflows that create fields. And, and you know, then you have to maintain all that, right? Versus maintaining a safe search, um, uh, much, much simpler. Um, moving on, you know, we're going to use ranking. I thought particularly that this was a very cool, uh, formula. Uh, I never used it before. Um, and I thought it was, it seems very useful. We're used to doing groupings. In this case, you know, we, we, if we want to rank, rank, uh, our, our results based on a criteria, then we can do that. Right. In this case, you know, we have, a, 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 and this introduced a new concept, um, where, you have the formula, but you also have these functions here that we, you may have used in the past. Uh, you want to, you know, uh, calculate percentage or calculate an, ad, an age, or if you want to show the day of the week, or if you want to round to hundreds or tens, or you know, these are different standard formulas that that allow you that you, that you don't have to use the formula field. You can use a field, a normal field, and then you know use the formula. In this case, we're using the balance. And we're using the function ranking, uh, so it's going to rank the balance based on you know an order, natural order, and we're sorting by balance here in in ascending order. So you would expect the results to come one through you know x, the numbers depending on the number of rows. But we're also ranking by descending order. So in this case, we're ranking. In descending, so you know, there's a little bit more complexity here that we'll talk in a second. But ranking uh, only by balance, descending, and then there is a the concept of the dense rank, 
And the dense rank is different than the rank in the sense that the, the, the dense rank is, is, an, is a consecutive number. Uh, and you'll see the results by, by, you see what I mean by that in a second, versus ranking, it's, it's not consecutive. Uh, so basically, you know, when you have ties, it skips to the, to the next number. Um, you know, you, you'll see that in a second. So these are the three uh, ways of doing ranking. You can do it ascending, you can do it descending. In this case is ascending. By default, this is descending because we have the descending criteria there in the formula. And when we, when we sort it, you will see the name of the customer, the balance, it, because it's being ranked by balance, it's being ordered by balance, but it's not being ranked with a number. It's just being ranked in order. It's, it's like sorting ascendingly. Um, but then here you have, it's ranking it by balance here. This is the standard balance. You see one through six, then there's a tie at seven, and then it skips to nine. But, and then the descending is the opposite. And there's 40 customers in this list. And then if I, if I do the dense rank, you'll see here that you'll have one through six. We still have a tie at seven, but it doesn't skip to nine. So it basically, it, it is a, non, a, a consecutive numbering scheme. So no number is skipped, where in the normal rank, the numbers can be skipped when you have ties. Uh, so it's the, depending on how you like ranking your, your lists, uh, you'll have different options to do so. Um, so we have about 40 minutes and about five searches left. So uh, I'll keep going and you know, I can, I'll stay over a couple of minutes if you guys wanted to finish the, 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 the topics um, and we'll again, record, record everything. Um, the next one is ranking with partition. And, and, and this is also um, very useful. It, it piggybacks on the ranking formula, but it adds a component. So again, we have our criteria, nothing complex there, but here we are ranking by, uh, we're using the same ranking formula, but by balance, but we're adding this partition by customer entity. So it's basically, uh, is doing it by industry. So in this account, customer entity three is the industry type, which is a custom field. In this account, contrary to best practices, this ID, this field ID was not properly documented, which is just a uh, best practice that we do encourage everybody to follow that the ID has a description of what the field is, but uh, we know that the customer in the three is the industry. And then, so we are ranking by, by balance and we're ranking by uh, balance again, but you're using uh, Roman numerals so that we can see that you can use multiple multiple formulas in one, right? So here you're going to see that, you know, we have the, the, the name, the industry, the balance of the customer. Uh, and then we're, we are sorting by industry first and then by balance. So the industries are all going to be, um, you know, first uh, or, or, or grouped together. And again, you know, we see here that it's ranking because we're ranking by industry. The first five of the industry are ranked one through five. When it changes to computer or hardware, it starts ranking again, one to two. Computer software ranks again. So it, it knows dynamically, you know, that you're ranking by, um, by, um, by first, by industry, grouping, basically grouping by industry and then ranking by industry as well. So you don't have to worry about uh, doing something different. If you wanted to change this and rank by balance, then it's going to do the same thing, but it's, gonna, it's also gonna rank it by, by, by industry. It's just gonna, not gonna be consecutive. So it's gonna show you you know, what the lowest, what the rank, the lowest rank is by in each industry as you go along. And, and if you have the same industry like here, then it'll, it'll rank you that way. So you can still, you'll still maintain the logic of the ranking even if you don't order it in the same way as you originally uh, intended. Again, again, you have it here in Roman numerals if you want to, you know, be cool about that. Um, Next one, you know, we'll talk about group functions and, and, and group is something that, you know, I used to use a lot, never used ranking before. Uh, and and, and what, what grouping allows you to do is display summary results. Um, so in this case, again, we have our simple criteria, um, but then we're grouping, we're grouping by certain, uh, we use the summary type, which is, you know, you have certain values that you can use in summary type, sorry. 
you know, and, and that's very limited what you can do, or there's a limited number of values. It's not limiting, but it's a limited number of values or, or formulas that you can use there. In this case, you know, you'll always want to want, if, if you're using grouping, you'll always want to have one group, but then everything else you want to have, you know, something that you're grouping by or something that you're using um, that grouping for. So in this case, we're grouping by industry. We're counting the number of customers uh, in that industry. Uh, we are not grouping my email and phone, so they're not going to show in the initial results, but they'll show in the drill down. Then we are we are showing the date created, and we're basically showing in that industry that we're grouping by what was the first date, the first time a customer uh, was created in that industry. Here we are doing what is the balance for that entire industry, what is the maximum balance. So this is my total balance of all my customers. But what is the customer maximum balance? Is there somebody that is a very big outlier there? And then, you know, if I have any overdue balance, what is the average overdue balance for that industry? So that's what this formula is doing, this, this setup is doing. And when I, you know, when you run, you'll see that there's a limited number of rows because we're grouping. So there's only, you know, five rows. And I'll, I'll go back to the formula in a second. You will see here that there's, you know, um, how many customers there are in this specific industry in my system? What was the, the date of the first sale? They're all the same date. What's the total balance? What's the largest balance? So here I can see I have five customers with a total balance of 1,993,000, but there's one customer that owes me 96,000. So one customer does is responsible for 50% of that balance. And then I have the average, um, the average um, overdue balance. If I click on any of these, then it's going to take me to the detail, which is going to include the same form, the same columns, and then additional columns that were not uh, displayed on the original, on the original uh, results. In this case, the name, because I wasn't grouping by name, I, or the email and the phone. So here I can say, well, you know, let's see. This is the. I, it still shows me the 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 balance, uh, and this is for each individual one. I can see then the results here, and I can see, yeah, of course, there's one customer gentry. That owes me that 50% of that balance. Um, and you know, and they're overdue 93,000. I have the phone number here. I can pick up the phone and call them, and then, then I can go to the customer record and you know, I can create a new note, right? So here, this is a, because this is a customer search, I could go come in here and create a new note directly from here saying I call this customer. So without leaving this safe search, I can document that I call them immediately to talk talk to them about the balance, right? Um, and then I can go back to my summary and do it again uh, with another with another customer if I, with another list if I want. Um, within that, um, you know, just very quickly, you know, see highlighting here. Um, so because we're doing summary functions, you know, there's two types of highlighting: uh, highlighting on the standard results and highlighting in the summary. If you want in, the, in that grouping or summary function. So in this case, you know we're highlighting by summary. So we want to highlight by industry, not by individual customer. Um, so it's going to, in this case, we're saying if the balance, which is this balance here uh, that we're summing here, um, if the balance uh, sorry, is more than $50,000 or $500,000, add, you know, add an image that you can show in the system and highlight the background you know, highlight it and put a description there that the industry balance is more than $500,000. So when I run this, you'll see here that there is the, the, the symbol that I have for this specific condition and highlighted it and it put my note here. So if I want to have multiple symbols here, I can have my, my explanation of what each of those symbols mean, right? So very cool stuff. Um, the next one, is grouping, but adding an additional layer, which is, you know, the an ordering, an ordering uh, layer. So in using this when order by field, which I'll be very honest, up until a couple of weeks ago, I had never used and I had no idea what it meant. Um, so now I know, and hopefully some of you will learn about that today here, but it's the same concept, you're grouping by industry. And then I have, you know, I wanna see my first order, what was the date of the first order in that industry? What was the the you know what was the name? So here's where this when when this comes in is if I'm if I am 
if I want to see the first order, I want to see who was that first order. So I say name minimum when ordered by this date, date of first order. So this date of first order here is referencing this, right? So basically I'm saying, show me who that first customer was. And, what, and again, what was the amount of that first transaction? Uh, because that's, again, I'm grouping. So how does it know when I say minimum, minimum of what? Well, minimum of the group that you're order grouping by this first order. So this is gonna show me that first customer, the amount of that first customer, the name and the amount. Um, it's gonna show me the maximum amount or that industry, maximum, maximum transaction amount, regardless of this, this criteria. And then it's gonna show me um, the maximum, the customer for that specific maximum order and the date of that customer. So where was that customer created? Um, and sorry, where was that customer transaction created? Because here we're using the dot, dot, dot fields. That's what that transaction call, call, call amount is, right? Um, so if I run it, it's gonna group, again, I'm gonna have a limited number of industries, same industries here, shows me what the first order was. When, when I did that first order for that, customer, that industry, who was that customer? What was the amount of that order? Who was the largest order that I've done for that industry? Who was that customer? And when did that happen, right? So now you can see here, if you're looking at statistical analyzing your industries, you could have added here count, right? If I wanna just go here and say, you know, show me, um, you know, in, in a, I wanna insert transaction, um, um, you know, and I wanted to do it in an account, uh, an account, I could add a count of transaction, right? Um, you know, and, and then add additional information here. I'm not gonna mess with it right now, but you can see here how within a search, you can get, you get all this information just by, by one seemingly simple search, right? Um, but once you get the hang of it, you can start, you know, creating a lot of these seemingly simple searches. Um, so we have uh, three more to go. So I hope you can stay with us or two more to go actually. Um, uh, the next one is formulas and criteria. Um, just number I have it here. Formulas in criteria and highlighting. So we talked about highlighting a little bit already, but here we have, you know, we've talked about formulas in results and we can still have formulas in results, but if we wanna, if we wanna filter further um, our criteria, we can use formulas, right? So in this case, you, you have the option of doing formulas. You only have three types here. You don't have, you know, other formulas, currency or percent here. You have date, numeric and, and text. In this case, I'm using a numeric formula. And, and if I open that formula here, I, I get the same formula editor. Uh, but here, what I'm saying is show me uh, any customer that is using less, less than 25% or has less than 25% left on their credit limit. And I'm calculating credit limit minus their balance over their credit limit if it's not zero, right? I'm, 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 I'm excluding lim customers that don't have a credit limit here. So it's showing, uh, I'm calculating that so that I can filter and only see customers that have very, very little credit limit because maybe I wanna approach them and you know, collect or increase the credit limit, however, whatever you want to do with the result of this search, you can do that. You can also add formulas that are text um, where you can, where you can define, you know, show me a formula where maybe the name starts with, you know, the name of the, of the, of the entity starts with the letter B, right? Um, and you can use those formulas or contains something. So it's going to filter those the, that criteria, instead of filtering it in here using a case when statement, which you also could, right? Only show me if it's less than 0.95%, it will exclude everything else. You're doing it from the criteria, right? It's a little bit, probably a little bit smarter to do it that way. Um, and then, you know, in this case, we're also highlighting, right? Using formulas where the, basically we're saying, you know, if, if um, the formula here is, you know, if here I'm using a case when in the formula where I'm saying if the balance is more or more or equal than four times your credit limit, tell me then 
do one, uh, the result is one, else is zero, right? So basically by saying, you know, if the result is one, I'm highlighting only customers where their balance is more than or equal to four times their credit limit. If it's not, then I can, it doesn't highlight it. So that's what that is doing. And it's going to have an exclamation mark out of the, 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 the images that are available. And then it's gonna have the text color in, in black. It's gonna have a background color. It's gonna be bolded. It's gonna have a description, right? Uh, and again, and you can also translate, we haven't talked about translations, but if you want to translate your text, you know, you can, you can translate it here, right? Um, if you were using somebody that uses their account in German, for example. So if I click save and run, um, again, it's going to, it has a highlight here. Uh, it's, it's, it's bolding those results. This is all part of the, the highlighting and it's showing me only the cases where the balance is more than four times the credit limit, right? So then you can take action on that. And like before, because it's a customer field, then we can create notes, we can do whatever we want to do. Uh, we don't have totals here, but we can also have totals. And here we have the explanation. <coughs> Finally, the last one is using safe searches to do KPIs. So um, here is the, you know, a safe search. And, and the, the, the key takeaway for safe searches and KPIs is that the result of the safe search can only be one number. Um, um, you can have, uh, you can drill down from the KPI, but the result that you're displaying can only be one number. So in this case, for example, my criteria is I only show me customers in the distribution wholesale industry, right? And that's the name of my KPI, customers in distribution wholesale industry. So that's my criteria. My results is, you know, because this is, because I'm grouping it, usually it will be a, a KPIs will be a result of a grouping um, using a, a, a summary type or grouping function. You can see that in the initial result, you're only gonna have one result because you only have the count. There's no summary type, right? So basically it's doing, giving me the count. And then I have all these results for the drill down that are gonna show up in the drill down. Um, and the other criteria for um, uh, KPI is that in the available filters, you need to have a date field selected. You don't have to show it in the filter, but it has to be selected so NetSuite can use that when you're doing your comparisons in the, in the KPI section, right? So the, based on date created by industry. So here I'm saying, show me how many, how many customers I've created in the whatever date range I select in my KPI. Uh, if I run this result standard from here as a standard um, KPI, um, then um, you can see here that, sorry, if I run it here, there's nothing, right? It's only one value. There's no columns. I, can, I can't even click on it, right? So see, it's gonna use this here and that's where naming your, your KPIs is gonna be, your, your safe search is important. But if I come to my dashboard, and I come to my KPIs here, I can see here, you know, I can see here the, um, that the KPI shows here. And I have, like with any KPI, I can, you know, I could change this where I could say, you know, show me my customers and instead of last year, uh, you know, last year to date versus, you know, this year to date, right? Um, uh, this is for year to date, for example. So I can change that, uh, save that, and when I refresh it, it shows me in this case zero. Um, but you know, I can make those changes and it dynamically change because it has that date filter on the results, right? So if I do just last year, like I had before, um, last year, and this year, and save goes back to the 199. And if I click on the 199, then it shows me the results of the, of the detail that I had on that save search. And I couldn't click it from the save search, but it shows it here. And I have additional highlighting here, uh, and additional things here like, you know, that I, based on what we showed before, I can have additional highlighting. If it's missing, for example, the email, I have it to be highlighted in yellow, right? So now, you're combining the KPI with the power of the safe search here to go here. And if I go back to the summary, 
is going to take me back to the summary, not to the dashboard, but you know, the summary, I won't be able to do much, much with that, right? So um, uh, before we go, I know some people have dropped off, but a couple of things that are, you know, I wanted to um, uh, show that are not part of the part of the safe searches or reminders to everybody um, that I want to I want to kind of cover very very quickly. It, one is you now you can create um, you know you can do emails from safe searches right. So as you are creating your safe searches and you want to create alerts, you have different options for creating those alerts. One is you know to create alerts when records are created and updated which means that the safe search is running in the background and it's looking at that. So if you wanna, you know, we have customers that say, well, you know, how do I control vendor creation, for example? Next, we doesn't have a process for approving a new vendor, right? That natively, that doesn't exist. If you have the permission to create it, you have the permission to create it. But maybe instead of creating that complex approval process, you wanna have a new safe search that says, when a vendor is created, email me every week, who created it, when it was created, the name, et cetera, right? So you can have the system do that and then you can audit, you know, who's creating all these vendors. And if you catch something, you know, uh, weird, then you can react to it. Or if somebody inactivates a vendor or somebody creates a, you can create all sorts of alerts in the system that email you. Um, you can also have them, you know, not necessarily do it when something happens, but do it on a schedule. Um, when you can say, well, once a week, send me all the vendors that are created this week. Uh, you can specify specific recipients for the for the safe search. So it goes to specific people, or you can have it from results. So for example, an example of this is if you have a, a, say, say, a safe search of, I don't know, sales per week by sales rep. Uh, if, if you have in the results, the sales rep value as a result, you could select that and it's going to, and if you have five sales rep, it's sell five sales reps, is going to email the safe search individually to each sales rep with their own unique results. So you have one safe, one safe search sent out to multiple people with their results, right? Well, only my sales for the week, my customers, not everybody else's. Uh, so you can narrow that safe search that way. You combining this with the schedule, obviously that's how you would do it. Um, you can do it only if certain fields are updated, if something's changed. Maybe it's, it's, if inactive is changed, email me. Uh, and then you can customize this, the, the result if you want. If you want to you know, create a, a little bit of an entry, uh, uh, you know, of an explanation to that, to that email, uh, here you can customize it. And then here's what you define, how do I want to send this? Do I want to send it as a PDF, as an Excel, as a CSV, or inline as part of the email? Uh, and finally, you know, if you do a schedule, this is where you define the schedule. If you want to send a result every every Sunday night, every Monday morning, then this is where you would control that scheduling of that of that safe search. Um, um, we talked about using them in sublists. You know, using them in sublists is by by clicking this. Uh, we can that that's something that we can certainly help with. We do that all the time, uh, so that you can have, you know, use, just like for example on the customer record, you have a sublist of projects. That is using a behind the scenes safe search that is marked as a sublist view. So it shows about the projects that a customer has. So we can do that with any linked transaction. And finally, then you, know, you can use them for reminders, right? If you want to use a specific, um, um, I don't know if I have one here for reminders, but if you want to be able to create um, a safe search that is used for reminders, then you know what's going to happen is. Um, you, if you click on the reminders, it's going to create a reminder on your dashboard with the number of results of that search. And then you can click through that. So if you want to, if I wanted to do one of the searches that talked about customers with overdue credit limit, I can have a safe search and create it as a reminder. So it shows me proactively instead of emailing me, it shows me every day how many customers I have with an overdue balance. And when I click on that reminder, it's going to direct me to the safe search with the detail. All that reminder is doing is summarizing it with a number of, of, uh, of, of, of cases of that specific safe search. Um, and finally, we talked about emailing, but you, when you run a safe search, you, you can save it and you can also save an email. So if you have an email here, you could create a safe search and email it to that re recipient right now. So you don't have to download that to Excel and email it separately. You can do it straight from it. 
So that, that's it for, for the topic uh, for the topic today. Sorry, we went over a few minutes. Hopefully this was useful. Um, we will post this in our YouTube page in the next few days. And, you know, it's always available there. Please subscribe. Um, tell your friends to subscribe. Uh, there's a lot of content that we'll be adding there. Um, and we already have about 20 some uh, recordings. Uh, hopefully that's useful. And we'll, we'll continue to do these this, um, sessions. If you have any topics you want to talk about or, or us to cover, please let us know. We'll consider those. And we're going to start doing this again at least twice a month. Uh, we were doing this weekly. We're going to set you twice a month uh, as long as these are useful and we have a good attendance and, and continue to, to you know, uh, try to fulfill your needs. So, again, thanks for your time and look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great weekend. Thank you.